welcome everyone to a review of the Gundam movie Char's Counterattack. And while I would like to do the entire review like this, I'm not going to. <laughs> so, what is Char's Counterattack? And what are these people doing here? Um, so we're we're here to talk about a an anime movie that has been years in the making in terms of review. Char's Counterattack is um, one of the, is arguably the the Gundam movie. Um, this is the movie that changed things. This is the movie that people remembered and talked about because it actually, um, well, spoilers, but we'll get into that. Um, so, Shara's Counterattack, for those who aren't, who aren't familiar, is a movie in the Gundam universe, in the original timeline, and Shar is the an, one of the big antagonists of the series. He shows up in the first Gundam series, um, he shows up in the second Gundam series, kind of reformed, sort of. Uh, and so he's in there a lot as well. He was going to be in the third series, Double Zeta, but they rewrote it hastily when they found they had the budget for a film. And so they decided to, to move the plot line with Char and Amuro Ray, the main character from the original series, into a movie. And the idea is that Char and Amuro have this rivalry. Um, Amuro is this kid who stumbled into this giant robot that's very powerful. And Char has always been pissed off about that, frankly. Um, like, why would somebody, um, you know, why would somebody who has no skill in war suddenly take over and do these things? It's just not right. Um, meanwhile, Char has his own issues. And I'm not here to defend Char. As, if he, Char's a nutcase. But anyway. Um, and so Char yeah, has his own plot line. And then... Things build up to a point, and in Char's counterattack, Char counterattacks. Um, Char decides to, yeah, uh, Char basically says, <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, backstory behind this is that uh, Char comes from a group of colonies that, that, that try to break off from the main Earth Federation. And he was part of the original ruling family of that colony um, until, let's just say, mysterious things happen to his father. And he was very much sidelined from all of that. And he decided to do something about that. And he did. Um, and so he has this whole plot of trying to get kind of revenge on how his side and his world, the things that his family stood for were all corrupted by these other people. Okay. And he really cares about the colonies. He wants to see the colonies succeed. Well, part of his frustration is that evil people basically took over the colonies um, and then started this, this, this war which failed. And so after that war fails, he realizes the problem is the only way for the colonists to be free is for them to stage a successful revolution, and they need somebody to lead them. And he is so well known that he was like, you know what, I am going to be that person. George Washington. Exactly. He says, I don't want to be that person, but they need me as the leader, if you will. This is exploring Gundam Unicorn, by the way, as folks mentioning in the chat room. Uh, in, in, its own, in their own way. So he leads his own revolution uh, for Zeon. And Amuro is pulled in. But the thing is, Amuro is 15 in the original anime series. He is oh. much older okay. when Jar's Counterattack comes along. Oh. So he is now in the prime of his skill mm. and his abilities and his new type powers, mm. uh, which have now developed. And these are kind of psychic oh. powers that they have. Yeah. And so you have a movie animation budget that is basically one long duel. Um, not quite one long duel, but it is very much about these two characters facing off and, and you know, um, delving into that situation. Now, I should point out, Char's counterattack is... Uh, it is... 80s movie animation budget. It is very clean, it is, it is high budget, but it's not... You know what we're used to now with a lot of these ridiculously high animation budgets but the point being that Did something happened I don't know um, <laughs> the point being that it um, it doesn't feel like a modern anime movie it, it feels very much like a, a, a product of its time and, um, and what it does uh, there's a lot of you know characters standing around without a lot of animation of them talking and then Mecha are suddenly constantly flying around and destroying each other. Um, so they kind of do that. Um, so he's a very uh, driven man in Char's contract. And that's one of the other interesting things, is that Char has basically decided, okay, this is it, this is my last stand. Like, 
I, this will either succeed or I'm going to go down. Right? Like, there's no way that, um, that's going to go anywhere. And that's the problem. You have somebody who's desperate mm. leading this group. And that's the worry, is that Char, there's no reason for Char to ever stop. Yeah. And it's why Amaro has to up his game to stop Char. Uh, and then they have their, their, uh, their whole, you know, issues. Um, and and, and their, their issues with each other. So that is a really interesting plot line for the movie. It's one of the nice things about the movie is that there's not a lot of other stuff. There are other characters, other things going on, but it's very much about those two things happening. Hmm. Now, spoiler warning. Massive spoiler oh. warning, which I have to get into oh. because that is the big thing about this movie. The end of the movie involves Shar trying to drop a planet-killing asteroid onto Earth. Basically, oh. um, not planet oh. killing, but a, 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 an asteroid that's going to be massively destruct destructive oh. and will thus force humanity <laughs> off Earth. Oh. So everyone's a colonist now. Oh, crap. Yeah. He just went super villain. Absolutely, okay. yes. It's really bad. <laughs> um, oh. But that's the thing about the, um, the story, is that the end is about Amuro convincing Char that he's wrong. And so Amaro, Char, and all the other characters end up flying their mobile suits to the asteroid to essentially divert it and cause it to break up in the atmosphere. And Char ends up joining him in this. So Amaro and Char at the end work together to stop this disaster. That's the best use of exactly. yeah. mobile suits there. The problem is no mobile suit can survive that. Oh, no. So the, the movie basically ends, again, spoiler alert, wow. with disintegration. Wow. Self-sacrifice. Self-sacrifice, yep. For, for all of them. Ooh. Right? Mm. So this was, in many ways, them saying, okay, that story's over! <laughs> the end Fear, Nothing totally. else with these the characters. Yeah, pretty much. We're, we're, we're done with is, that. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's closure. So the, Yeah, that's Armour yeah. and Char. Now, <laughs> granted, it's anime. They could always find a way. Yeah. But oh, we, we suddenly vaporized. Exactly, you know. Oh, we, we survived. Something opened up. Um, uh, well, but we made a clone. <laughs> well, yeah. funny you should say that. Oh, um, dear. <laughs> but um, in fairness, like they, they thus far we have never seen Shar again. Like he is, he's done. And same thing with Amaro. Um, and that's the amazing thing about this movie is that they kill off two of the, the two main characters. Of Universal Century, arguably, mm. you know. Less than 20 years into that story's run. And wow. it's like, that just gets turned off, and we're going to have to show other characters and other things going on. So it's a very um, impressive thing yeah. for a movie to do. Um, so, yeah, that's Charles Counterattack. It's a really remarkable film. Um, it is a product of its time, but it is a, gosh, it's a... It's an interesting thing. Saga. It's a saga, and it's, it's the end of a saga. Yeah. Absolutely. So... That's that. Wow. I've got to see this now. <laughs> <laughs>